Guys, as you can see, I'm not a big hat guy, but this thing's looking pretty good. I actually just got some new gear from Core Essentials. Core Essentials makes EDC belts first and foremost, as well as some other awesome gear as well. They actually reached out to me uh, in order to give them a thorough review of their EDC belts. They were kind and generous enough to not only give me one belt, but actually two belts. The first one is this awesome one and a half inch gray tactical belt. And the second one is this really cool brown EDC leather belt. So I'm gonna give these a thorough review as I promised them, but before doing so, I wanted to give you guys a bit of a, like an unboxing and a setup video to kind of walk you step by step how I'm going to set up these belts because they do actually require some setup because they come in a really long size and you actually have to cut them down. I just wanted to go through this process with you guys starting from square one, so let's get to it. All right, guys, I am here with all of the gear that Core Essentials did send me. Obviously, it all came in one box, but let's start off with the actual belts themselves. One and a half inch, uh, each of these EDC belts are. They also have different sizes as well, but I'm an EDC guy. I'm a concealed carry, just a civilian carrier, I guess you could say. So I felt like the one and a half inch EDC belts were perfect for me to give a thorough review on uh, for Core Essentials. Another, once again, another big thank you to Core Essentials. Now they did send me these for free, but I'm going to be honest as always uh, in regards to you know what I think about them quality wise and everything like that. And I will give a thorough review, but that will be another video. This will just be an unboxing and setup video. So first things first, you have the one and a half inch gray tactical nylon belt here and the other one and a half inch brown leather belt. And I always wanted to try out these core essential belts. And the biggest reason for that was because of this ratchet system that they have. Now we will get into that in a little bit, but let's first start out with what they sent me as well and what comes with the belts. They also were kind enough to send me this really cool trucker hat and I'll put that to the side. I'm not a big uh, hat guy, but I do find myself putting a hat on at the range, uh, outdoor range every now and then. It also comes with this box here with the core logo on the front. And let's open it up and see what's inside. First, you have this uh, ins instruction manual for sizing. Now you open this up and it tells you what to do, but also what I would recommend is just scanning that QR code right there and it brings you right to the video that you need in order to size these belts. Now let's dig in a little bit deeper here. Here are the buckles that I picked out. This one's going to be for the gray tactical belt, nylon belt that I have, and this one is going to be uh, for the brown leather belt. It's a little bit more obviously of a traditional look to it. Obviously this doesn't isn't actually functional, but it'll look like a normal dress belt. I wear boots sometimes as well as dress uh, shoes sometimes, and this brown leather belt is going to match perfectly much better than my uh, kind of tactical nylon belts that I've been running with them so far. Now also included in the box here, you can see that there is a sleeve here for the gray one. I don't see one for the leather one, but maybe I won't really need that as much, but I'm assuming this is just a sleeve to keep the end of the belt uh, tucked in on that gray tactical nylon belt. And it also comes with some Allen keys and some hardware. I believe we'll need this to uh, attach the buckles after sizing the belts. And they also included, these were optional, as it says here, optional item. These are sleeves, I think they're to protect the belt. These are really cool to have if you're, especially for the leather one, if you're concerned about your holster kind of chewing up the belt, especially on the leather ones. I do have a concern though, just for my own situation, because the holster that I kind of run every single day, I'll show you in a second, is the Tenacore um, holster. And what it has on it is the T1 clips here, which are, I've put in uh, previous review videos, these are, these things bite, man. Honestly, they're very, very tight. So I may actually have to, um, you know, loosen them up a little bit. That way they uh, either don't chew up the belt or if I put the sleeves on it, obviously that's going to make the belt like thicker and harder for these things to grab onto. So that is a, a slight concern of mine, but let's see how it plays out. Now that was what was in the box completely. Now let's go back to the belts themselves. Now the belts themselves are super, super high quality. I would say the tactical uh, gray model 
is very similar quality to the uh, Siguera emissary belt that I have been using. Now, obviously, that does not have the patented ratchet system for an EDC belt, so that's what I'm really excited for with this belt here. I have a feeling this is going to be uh, a big-time everyday carry uh, uh, item for me going forward. You could see the ratchet system right here, and right there it says Core Tactical Power Core Center and with the patent number. They do have a patent number, not for the ratchet system, but for the actual uh, power core center there, as you can see. Let's get that focused for you. You can see that power core center right there, giving it plenty of flexibility while also being super, super stiff in order to keep that firearm from sagging your belt, belt down. The leather belt has obviously the same power core uh, inside of it, just like that. Very similar on the inside here you have the ratchet system and then you see core and top grain leather gun belt power core center coreessentials.com with that patent number also here is where you actually get the sizing for uh you know where you have to cut the belt so based on my research and based on the video that uh, they sent me that when i scan that qr code you basically are going to want to take your pant size so i'm like a 33 34 pant size and I'll, I'll just go with 34, and you're supposed to add six to that. So if you're a 34 pant size, you go up to 40 right here, and you cut right there. Now, obviously, remember, this is very common sense. You would think this wouldn't need to be said, but always err on the side of being conservative when you're cutting, right? Because you can always cut more, but you can never add on more. So I'm a 33 or 34 inch waist, and I'm going to cut at 40. So here you could see it's a slightly different looking. On the nylon belt, you can see 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. So I'll be cutting right there. Okay, now for what it's worth, before cutting, I told you I'm a 34 inch um, pant size, and it says to take your pant size and add six to it. But for what it's worth, my Siguera, Siguera emissary belt, I lined up on one end here and kind of measured to where this one goes to, and it actually only goes to about right around 36. Now, I'm still gonna cut it 40, because like I said, be super, super conservative with this. I could always cut a little more if needed, but this is a Siguera Emissary Belt medium size, and it fits me just fine. Actually, it has a lot of uh, uh, extra length on it, to be honest with you. So, so I'm gonna start with 40, cutting at 40. I'll put the, uh, the buckle on and see how it sizes up to my waist based on that. One other thing I wanted to show you guys before cutting this, I did notice it does say made in China here on the edge, but the good news is that they do actually have a USA made version. I actually wish I kind of uh, asked for that because that's kind of my thing, but maybe next time. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to show you that. So I'm actually going to test out cutting this thing at the end before just to make sure that my scissor works just fine to make sure that it's like sharp enough and stuff. Uh, they say to make sure that you cut very, very straight. And I'm cutting this, and this is like just like a regular kitchen uh, scissor. And it's, it's taking a while, but it's cutting through it just fine. You just have to go very slow. And that's that. So there is a little bit of kind of fuzz when I cut it like that. So now that was just like a test run. Let's actually go with the actual length that I'm gonna go with. Like I said, we are going down to 40 right here. So you find 40 right there. Let's get to cutting. All right. That cuts very, very easily, way more easily than I thought. Like I said, it does get a little fuzzy parts on it, but you could just clip those off. Yeah, maybe for the leather one, I'll actually try a, uh, a sharper um, uh, pair of scissors. But let's get started on getting the buckle on this gray tactical version. Okay, so here is the buckle that we're putting on this gray tactical uh, EDC belt. Now, this buckle is, uh, you know, very nice quality, actually. And this is going to look really nice. This is going to look really, really nice. I'm super excited. So let's actually, may as well use the... Allen key and the hardware that they included. So we just slip it right into this slot here. Well, actually first, it looks like we have to unlatch this and 
loosen these first. Now, I'm not entirely sure. Looks like the hardware is already in here. So I don't know what exactly these are for, but we're about to find out. So this is all loosened up and we're going to slip this in right now. And there you go. Actually, it looks like we could actually loosen these even more to get it further into the buckle. Obviously, you're going to want to have it, you know, as into the buckle as you possibly can. Let's just take them out completely and see what happens. Yeah, it goes all the way in. There we go. All the way in. We're going to put these back in now. We're going to tighten them, and then we're going to tighten that that this little uh, strap thing here. Let's see what happens. All right, it kind of goes into that back end rubber of the uh, tactical nylon material. You can hear it kind of squeak. I wouldn't go too much. I would just go until you hear that sound, and then you tighten it up like this, and I guess that's it. I don't think that's really going anywhere, guys. And we're done. So now, let's test out how this buckle works. Slide it in. Oh yeah, that's really nice. And what a cool looking belt too. Now you can see the ratcheting system here. Works really well going in. And then in order to loosen it, I believe you just hit, hit this little tab here. Let's see. Yep, you just pull that tab and it comes right out. This is an awesome design that they have going on here. All right, now on to the leather version. All right, I'm not even gonna get a, uh, a sharper scissor here. Let's just get going on this leather one. So the markings are a little bit different on the leather one for whatever reason. So we're just gonna make sure that we go to 40. Like I said, once again, take your pant size and go up six inches. And we're just gonna cut right on 40. See if it's any different cutting through the leather as opposed to the nylon. I would say it's about the same, to be honest with you. Maybe even slightly easier. There it goes. So there's that power core that they call in there. And let's get it into the buckle that they gave me. So once again, we're going to take this hardware out. Actually, take this off first. Take this hardware out. And this is actually, actually a really nice, uh, like a gunmetal sort of finish. Very, very nice. I hope you could see it well. My lighting is a little bit off today. I'm kind of trying to use the natural light right by this window over here uh, in order for you guys to see. But let's take out that hardware one at a time. So I, I'll double check after this, but the it looks like these uh, uh, screws here are really just if you lose them. So if you want to keep them, you can. If not, you don't have to. So let's take those completely out and put it into this buckle. I mean, I'm really impressed with the quality of these belts and buckles so far. So also just make sure that it goes all the way in. You see here, it goes all the way in there and then tighten down the hardware until you kind of hear that squeak noise. Tighten those up and just make sure that you keep that leather or that uh, the belt all the way into the buckle while you're tightening. I mean, it's really a pretty simple process, guys, but, you know, it can be a little bit uh, intimidating to cut brand new nice belts like this. So I actually don't get the same sort of squeak on this leather one as I did on the tactical one because I guess it doesn't have that rubber, but we're just going to make that kind of, you know, tight enough. And there it is. So as you can see here, it goes right in. You hear that ratchet and it, it doesn't go anywhere. You could tighten it. And you cannot pull it out unless you pull this thing up and it very easily comes right out. So yeah, that is it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. Keep an eye out. Like like this if you uh, got any uh, value out of it. But definitely subscribe to uh, keep up to date with the thorough review I'm going to give these EDC belts coming up shortly. Let me know in the comment section what you think about these core essential belts. If you have one, let me know what you think about them. And if you like them or dislike them, what you like about them, what you dislike about them. Or if you're looking to get one, drop a comment in the comment section down below and I'll let you know my thoughts. Appreciate you guys tuning in and I will see you next time.